Sean Tobin is an Irishman whose brilliance takes many forms, but he's best known for his novels, which have been shortlisted for the Man Booker Award and the Whitbread Award and have won the LA Times Book of the Year and the International Impact Dublin Literary Award, which is the world's richest literary prize. Like, say, America's Michael Cunningham or England's Alan Hollinghurst, he's a gay writer who, without toning down his content or style, has won a global audience. So when you were about 41 in 1996, you published The Story of the Night, your first novel with a gay protagonist. So did this represent some kind of more public coming out for you? Yeah, it was a very big deal. What, what happened really was that um, I'd written two novels and um, I was having supper with um, Marsha Rowe and um, we were talking about the, the possibility of me writing another novel and what it would be about. And um, she raised the subject. She said, you know, it is a bit odd, if you don't mind me saying so, that you've never written about the subject. I said, well, I don't know. You know, I'm not sure I have anything to say. You know, I was, you know all the things. She said, well, you must be joking. I mean, I mean, at some stage, you're going to have to do it because no novelist cannot. It seems to me that you're avoiding the issue. She said this very pleasantly, but very firmly and intelligently. And um, then she wrote to say that she was editing an anthology on I infidelity. And could I give her something for that? So I gave her the first chapter of the story, then, which I wrote very quickly. And of course, it was written in the first person, almost as an um, 18th century confession novel. You know, this is who I really am. It was set in Argentina, um, where I had been a lot, which was even more repressed um, for gay people, say, in the 80s than Ireland ever was. I mean, you, you would meet gay people in Argentina in the 80s who had never told anyone that they were gay. In other words, they'd had casual sex, so obviously the person they'd had that with knew they were gay, but they'd no friend they'd ever told. You know, in Ireland, there, were, there was a big case, which was one of mine, where if you come out of your friends and half your family. Some people know, some people guess, and some people just don't think about those things. And well, they an know old, in Dublin and, and there's an old the Yes, and there's an old aunt who would kill her if she found out. You know, so that a lot of Irish people in the 80s especially were, were, were living very comfortably like that. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a norm as opposed to in America where you would do a coming out party and overnight your granny, the whole lot of them would just know and just have to put up with it. Ireland was moving more gingerly towards openness and freedom, but Argentina wasn't. So um, anyway, I wrote the novel and, and publishing it was, was, was really, I mean, a very big deal. I, I, I did a reading from it in Listowel, at Listowel Writers Week, which is a small town in County Kerry in the west of Ireland. And um, a brother of a friend of mine didn't come to the reading, but he came into the pub after and looked at me and said, um, there was a lot of talk about you up the town. He said it very sweetly, but also I was, there were a number of writers there who were very careful to make sure that I was okay about it because they knew what a big deal it was, for example, to read from the book openly. It shouldn't have been a big deal, but, but nonetheless it was. I mean, you are so much braver and better. Oh, I mean, it was, it was like that for all of us in the 90s. It was, it was nerve wracking the first time we had to answer all those stupid questions from the journalists, you know, who often didn't want to talk about our novels at all. They wanted to say, when did you first have same sex sex? You know? Yeah, but I suppose there's nothing more interesting than gossip of finding out something completely new about someone you know. So that I, I sort of understood that everybody thought, oh, wow, look at you. <laughs> So the story of the night and um, the Blackwater Lightship, which you published in 1999, they could both be seen in some ways as coming out novels or as AIDS novels. I mean, how do you, what do you feel about AIDS fiction as a genre? Does it, does it make sense to you as a label? Um, I suppose I was terribly interested, especially in the story of the night, um, in establishing that people who got sick in those years were not destined to do so, and that it came as an enormous shock to people what was happening to their bodies, because it was not happening to their souls. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that was a terribly important story to establish. And um, in the novel, The Blackwater Lightship, I actually came across a case of someone who, whose family I knew. And again, he was out in you know, the city, not out in the country, not out at home. But he was gonna have to go home and not only tell them that he was gay, but that he was dying. And I thought that was the saddest story I'd ever heard. 
And he was so beautiful and so young and so ready for his life. And this was going to happen to him. And I just thought it was awful business. And it was a story that, I mean, I remember doing everything possible not to write it. You know, I'd love to write a story about the 50s and emigration and the famine, all the things, other things have happened in Ireland. And, but one August in Barcelona, there I was with the opening of the book and suddenly realizing that I, I, had, a, I had a story that would not leave me alone, which was that story of a boy in that condition in Ireland and how then the family would, would sort of handle it. And... Um, so I, I wasn't aware, in a sense, of, of a genre, uh, whether AIDS fiction or even gay fiction, as much as something that was really impelling me, that was urgent, that I couldn't avoid telling, even though with the second novel, especially The Blackwater Lightship, I did try not to write. And um, you've got a great collection of essays, Love in a Dark Time, about um, gay writers from Wilde to Almodovar. And um, you say in the introduction that you really didn't intend to write a book on gay themes. So how did it happen to you despite well, yourself? the City of London is a great thing. I, I, I always say, I'm, as an Irish person, I'm so proud of us that we built it. And um, it's full of serious liberal people, you know, who were way ahead of me when I arrived there first, you know. And um, so I started to write for the London Review of Books. And what I was writing for them about was hi Irish history. And so if anything came up, for example, on the 150th anniversary of the Great Irish Famine, I got every book published. And I wrote a very long piece about that. But of course they said to me, well, why don't we s you start writing about sexuality? And I said, oh, I don't think, like, I'm not a, theor I'm not a queer theorist. There are loads of those going around. I'm not one of them. And I'm not sure I want to do this. But of course, what they would then start to do was send me, you know, a biography of Thomas Mann or send me a biography of James Baldwin, or let me review Elizabeth Bishop's letters. And um, what happened was each time the book would arrive, I would think, actually, that's really interesting. And then I would sit down and do it. And then over a number of years, I realized that I had been working without meaning to on trying to create a bedrock somehow, a movement that we can chart very easily from two men, for example, who died because they were gay, who are Oscar Wilde, who really didn't survive his prison experience, and Roger Casement, who was hanged by the British, partly for, I mean, he was, took part in the 1916 rebellion or tried to import arms from Germany, but essentially it was because they found his diaries. So two men who died because of it, and coming to the end where I went to interview Almodovar, living in Spain, who had created a sort of new sensibility, not only for gay people in Spain, but for Spanish people in Spain arising from his confidence about his sexuality. Or a figure in America like Mark Doty, who had, you know, was writing this exquisitely beautiful poetry. Um, and so, so you were moving over 100 years from darkness to light. And in the middle of this is the heroic figure, of, for me, of Tom Gunn, who's this, who haunts me in his heroism. For suddenly in his love poetry, moving from saying you to saying he, which, you know, he didn't do in his first books. And it, it seems to me, for gay people, almost like what the Annunciation is for Christians, when Tom Gunn moves in a poem to saying it, saying it, saying it, that there's that flash of light you get in those wonderful paintings of the Annunciation, um, when the Savior is coming, that it can be said by, by, by a great poet in a poem one month when it couldn't be said the month before. Oh, I remember myself, you know, writing all my poetry as you, and then the first time I said she. Yeah, yeah, you're right, it's, it's the key moment. You say that the essay collection moves from darkness to light, but you're really very interested in the darkness end of the spectrum, aren't you? You've got that great quote from Thomas Mann um, where he says in a letter to his son, the secret and almost silent adventures in life are the finest. So do you think secrecy is the, the bedrock of good storytelling? I, I'm locked in to a part of history that I cannot escape, which is that I almost live part of my life in the, in the lives of the generation earlier than mine, so that I belong in certain ways to the 40s and 50s, as much as I belong to the, to the 90s or the noughties. And um, that elements of shame, 
fear, darkness surrounding not only homosexuality, indeed, but heterosexuality, but especially homosexuality, and especially my own, um, continue to haunt me. In, in, other words, in other words, I come too late to the liberation business to, to have a fully um, uncluttered imagination by it. Could you tell us a little about your next novel, Brooklyn? Um, yeah, I've written a novel called Brooklyn. It's about an Irish girl who's totally innocent, really nice, and she goes to Brooklyn in 1951 and she works selling nylon stockings. So I had to do a whole lot of research on nylon stockings and uh, on the whole business of um, emigration from Ireland in those years. And, um, and, and, and there is a story in the book of actually what happens. And there's a whole lot of things that I've never managed to write about properly before, like love, um, like, you know, just open, innocent love. And I hope it was a whole new phase in my life that I could start, you know, just being less gloomy, really. Thank you very much for talking to us, Colm. Thanks, Anne.